everyone, welcome to my studio again. Uh, if you don't already know me, you might have some latecomers, you never know. Uh, my name's Marion, I'm a mixed media artist based in March in Finland, and I'm here to get you all art journaling. So this week we're all about words. We're looking at words and text, how we can use them in our art journals to good effect, and what sort of things we can do with them. So without further ado, let's get on and be wordy. So I'm going to kick off and just give you a bit of a whistle stop tour through some of the things that um, you might have um, or you might want to keep an eye out for when we're allowed back out into the world again, um, all text related. So let's crack on. So magazines and newspapers, junk mail, all that kind of stuff, because you want to be cutting out words. Now, I get my lovely box of words. I have my mum to thank for this. I know she's watching, so thanks, mum. Uh, she cuts out words out of all sorts of stuff and then sends them to me in little packets. Um, I use a lot of words um, with kids in schools when we do projects um, uh, with them uh, all around words. So magazines, junk mail, you know, save words that appeal to you or funny little phrases. Um, you might also want to consider book pages, which I had some of here and now they seem to have disappeared, but you know what an old book page looked like. Um, don't use one of your new books, you know, pop along. I know you can't at the moment, but when you can, have a look at your book sale in the library or the charity shops, find a book that appeals to you. I like using older style books because you get a funny old turn of phrase in those, uh, which can be quite amusing. Now, don't forget this humble sticker. Um, raid the kids and grandkids um, stash, see if they've got any letter or word stickers that you can use because they're always great in journals. Uh, in a similar vein, uh, this, is, well, this is actually letter set but uh, known as dry letter transfer. Uh, you might remember, some of you might remember this from when you were a child, it's the sort that you rub and it comes off on your page. Um, you can still get it around, uh, stationers do it and stuff, So, if you, but if you see it in a charity shop or anything it's worth picking it up because you can use the letters in your journals. Stencils. Now I've got loads of stencils, most of them I've got from charity shops or junk shops or car boot sales, so keep an eye out. Stencils are really good. If you don't like your handwriting and you want to you know, use a stencil that's great and they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. I've got little ones, medium, big. This is a lovely uh, big plastic kids set. Um, nice white clean stuff, so if you want to make a bold statement with big letters. So stencils are something to keep an eye out for or to raid your kids and grandkids stuff for. They'll love me, won't they? All this stuff I'm telling them to go and pinch from the kids. So rubber stamps. Again, if you don't like writing, you might um, want to stamp in your journals. You may or may not have any, but again, they're worth looking out for um, in chat shops and again, look through the kids stuff. All sorts of shapes and sizes and patterns. This is a kids set I picked up in a charity shop. I think it was a pound, one pound fifty, something like that. There's a lot of good stuff out there for journaling that you can get in a charity shop or um, or a car boot or stuff. Um, these are nice big foamy, foamy uh, rubber stamps as well. So all shapes and sizes and styles. Now these. Let's not dwell on how many bottles of wine I had to drink to get these corks, but these are um, a set of alphabet stamps that I carved myself. So that's quite cool. I just um, just used a plain craft knife. You know, be careful of your fingers, of course. Um, but yeah, and just carved out letters and got a whole alphabet set for for nothing. Well the cost of a bottle of wine or two, uh, but let's not dwell on that. So fancy having a go at making your own, oh they've gone everywhere, um, you know, think about corks and stuff. Uh, the last thing I want to show you, this isn't a common everyday item, but just show you what's around really. I picked this up at a car boot sale. These are uh, an entire alphabet um, of hole punches. So they, uh, they all punch letters. I uh, picked them up for a couple of quid at a car boot sale. So, um, yeah, do keep your car boot sales, charity shops, junk shops, you know, scrap stores as well. Keep an eye out for all sorts of stuff that um, you'll be able to use in your journals. Um, so that's a very quick tour through a few things. The only other thing, pens and pencils and stuff as well, but we've, we've kind of been through them. Use what you have, that's what I say. Right, let's have a look and see what we can do with this stuff now.
So let's talk about handwriting. Um, I've got a selection of my journals out, just a few different things to show you, uh, just to get your head around, you know, using writing in your art journals. And obviously handwriting is one of the easiest ways to get text and lettering and stuff into your journals. So I thought we'd kick off with that. So some of these are um, not that groundbreaking or anything. This is one of my holiday journals. Um, and I chose I chose this sheet just to show you. I haven't written in straight lines. You know, you could go on a curve. You could write in a circle as well, which I couldn't find an example of, but I have done in the past. Um, yeah, just straightforward using your own handwriting. You know, and I've got another one in here. Uh, this one. Um, I've written around the shape of, uh, this is my Isle of Skye journal, so I've written around the shape um, of sky that I'd cut out of something else. So you might want to write around an image um, or a shape or anything like that. So that is just a couple out of there. This one I chose because it's got some different styles of writing, you know, big, le big letters, small letters, you know, boxes around them, all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's a bit angsty, but uh, if you can ignore that and just look at the styles. So you can vary your writing in a lot of ways. Um, actually, while, I've, while I'm saying that, I will bring this in. Um, I've got this little thing that I did. I'll include this in the supplementary PDF as well, so you could even print it off if you want to. So uh, hopefully you can see what it says, but it's just really talking about different styles of handwriting. So you might want to use all uppercase or lowercase letters. You might want to alternate between printing letters and cursive, sort of hand, lovely cursive. I haven't got lovely cursive handwriting, but if you have, that would be a good one to cultivate. Uh, you might want to alternate words between upper and lowercase, like this sentence. You might want to do outline letters of various sorts, narrow letters or wide letters, or alternate styles within words, like I've done here. You might want to try different pens and pencils, different colours, different nib widths, you know, different sorts of ink in them. You could alternate different colours within words, of course. Uh, and then at the bottom, this last sentence is just me having a play, coming up with different sort of lettering to you. So as I say, this will be in the PDF for you to have another look at, but it's just a few ideas. There's loads of books and stuff out there. If, you, um, if you've ever done calligraphy, that's brilliant for um, art journals as well. Um, and I know currently, I think there's a relatively new magazine out about hand lettering, because it's quite um, on trend and popular at the moment. So uh, if you feel the need to uh, learn a bit of lettering, uh, do have a look around at what's out there. So that's that one. Uh, this one, uh, just again a variety of sizes, a massive word on one page which I've cut out, just to give a bit of interest in the pages. And this is just quotes um, in boxes of squiggles around a bigger thing in the middle. So, um, you know, really basic stuff but it looks quite cool. Uh, this one I chose, I'm going to talk about cut out letters later on but really I chose you to show this background to you because uh, this is cross writing which I think is an age-old thing that uh, people did many moons and moons ago so I've written ordinarily the normal way you would write across the page and then I've turned my book and written the other way so it kind of obscures it doesn't completely obscure it but it makes it much much harder to read uh, what you've written so if you've written stuff that you don't want um, particularly other people to read um, should they happen upon your journal. That's quite a nice way to, um, you know, keep it a bit secret if you don't want anyone to um, to see. I had a bit, of, funnily enough, a bit of bleed on this page from some ink further into the book and it looked like a cow, so I kind of made it into a cow. Happy, uh, happy serendipity. <laughs> happy accident. Uh, so and on this side I've got various boxes as well and again different styles of writing which I've tried to do as well so another example of that now this is from a kids um i did a project with um kids art journaling in massive big journals and we had a discussion about initial letters and sort of playing around with uh, different sizes and patterns and stuff so this is a sort of an example page i did with the kids that day so i thought that would be good to show you as well i hope you can see that i'll do a better picture um to add into the PDF as well so you can see it properly. I think the light might be bouncing off it. 
so just a few ideas there with handwriting um, you know obviously think about what pens and pencils uh, crayons you know all the stuff that we've mentioned before um, will come into play here you don't need particularly any you know special pens I think even if you only had a black biro you could still do um, plenty of stuff with it different patterns and you know like, a bit like this one really you know where I filled in with different patterns and different shapes and you know whatever sort of pen you've got you can always change the shape and the size and the style so that's a little bit about handwriting if you dislike your handwriting and know a lot of people do um, I'm not very proud of mine but I've over the years I think it's just part of who I am in my journal so my scruffy script um, is, is just me but if you do dislike your handwriting um, we'll move on and have a look at some stuff uh, where you haven't got to write. Okay, now let's have a look at um, using text that we've cut from other things uh, and used instead of our handwriting. So let's kick off with this um, journal. I do this. I do this a lot, but I do love it. I'm not bored with it yet. Um, basically, on both sides of this cover, I have just cut um, various text from magazines and book pages. Uh, some of it is from printed documents as well. Um, that I haven't used all of it of, so I've chopped some of that up and added. None of it makes any sense, but it does make me smile. <laughs> lots of uh, lots of bits of text that are completely unrelated. It's just a really fun thing to do. What does sheep eat? <laughs> so that's uh, one way you can use lots of text. I do this a lot. Also good for lists as well if you want to do little lists with funny text. So a couple of um, spreads in here to show you. Uh, now this one on the left... Just so, just to show you an example of how cut words don't have to make any sense really, all I've done here is use random bits of text. I suspect I had them left over from something else, so, um, and in my not throwing anything away vein, um, I've just randomly glued them onto the page and then done a bit of outlining and stuff. So it's just an abstracty thing done with words uh, in a similar way. <laughs> This one, this is actually a background, so I'm harking back to last week again now, but these are bits of um, old book page that I had used for something else. Um, so I've cut, snipped bits out of them, and you can see I've got gaps here and there, but again, I don't throw anything away, so I just randomly glued them down, and I've highlighted uh, some, some random words within it as well. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, found poetry and that sort of text play uh, later on as well. And then back here, come on, can't get my pages over, here we go. So on this one here, again this is just random bits of text cut um, from pages and sort of leftover stuff that I haven't wanted to use um, when I've chosen text from that page. So again I've just glued them all on, they're nice range of colours, just look a nice pattern really, add something to the page in a different way. So that's a few examples from that book. Um, another thing you can do with cut text is um, what I call ransom note style. If you don't know what I mean, I've got one hiding under here. Here we go, hopefully you can see that. Um, I haven't glued any of that down, I was just looking to make an example for you. So it's just chopping out letters, individual letters um, from magazines, newspapers, whatever you've got really, junk mail, uh, and sort of use them on the page. Uh, once you've stuck them down you can draw around them you know annotate them add ink onto the letters and all sorts of stuff and that's a quite a fun way to create a page also can do it with words as well so if you had individual words you could do them in a ransom note style now let's see if i can move this without shooting it everywhere let's move that up now now i have quite a passion for large letters as well um so i'll often oh that's got bent down um i'll often cut letters from things this is from the same journal that I mentioned earlier when I worked with um, a group of um, children making big chunky art journals out of cardboard and stuff. And this was my cover I think actually. Um, so yeah basically just cut letters from um, painted papers that I'd got knocking about onto a um, paler background, nice bright yellow background. I like the boldness of big letters, you can make a nice statement. Um, with big letters and similarly this one here which um, is also cut letters from different things. Um, 
So yeah, these are cut from book pages. Oh, that's not actually cut, that's an actual shape, so I think maybe that was a stencil, but you can see, you know, some of these are cut and not, but it's a nice bold statement, um, and I've just sort of done a, a black outline and a bit of paint and, you know, just play, play about with nice big letters um, and make a statement on your page or on your cover even, you know, where, wherever you want to make a statement. Uh, a few more. To show you this is my elastic band journal uh, that I made in the first week and did all my backgrounds in last week so I've done this um, <laughs> this seemed appropriate um, lockdown um, page in the front of my journal and it is literally as as with some of the others they're cut from book pages um, I did just just did these freehand because I like the randomness of that sort of cutting um, but obviously if you prefer you can draw on them with pencil first or if you had a big stencil you could stencil and then cut the outline of the stencil um, I went then went round my edges um, you may or may not be able to see but I initially did it in purple biro then added some black biro and then decided no it needs to be bolder so then added the black permanent marker over it as well and I liked it I like the boldness of the the outline showing there uh, and oh I just flapped all my ransom note so also this one now um I was thinking randomly about what I call word clouds, which you often see online, where um, you can get word cloud generators where you put words in and it makes a shape, like clouds or hearts, you get all sorts of shapes of sort of similar words. And I was thinking about that and how to translate that into a journal page. And this is what I came up with last night. Um, there is not really any connection between these words. The only connection is that I went through my box of words and just picked out ones that appealed to me. Um, some of it, I, I, it is sort of interconnected um, in random ways, but I didn't think about it too much uh, when I was gluing them down. Um, but you, but if you look, um, you can see there are things that make sense in that they are sentences. Like, for instance, uh, "Discover pizzas fighting." That is a sentence. It's a stupid one, but it is a sentence. Um, stuff like. Um, unlock original thought towards satisfies poetry now it's nonsense but it makes sense if you see what I mean uh, so it's kind of semi-random but obviously you could cut words of um, I don't know flower names or something that's interconnected and make your word cloud themed or just be daft like me and just randomly um, pop things on the page and just see how they work together I like the sort of um, it's like building blocks almost when you're fiddling about with them on the page and I doubt that's quite fun to do uh, and then I did around the outside of all the words there's outlines and underneath here there's some napkin with circles on so I've kind of highlighted those and done cross hatching uh, yeah just to finish it off I really like it I love fiddling about with words you can probably tell um, so that's that one as well so um, yeah lots of cutting out so yeah have a look at magazines and newspapers junk mail everything around you that you might be able to use um, with letters that you can cut and stick onto your pages because it really doesn't have to be right writing like handwriting if you're really not into handwriting so yeah go and cut things up <laughs>
So it'd be great if you had a go at this. That was cool. Just flick through that portrait. That's lovely. So let's put that to one side. So I've done a very little one here. I was flicking through my um, elastic band journal last night and I folded this page in half and glued it with a book page because it was um, a bit flimsy. And I was just looking through the text and I caught the words beautiful heart. So decided that I would highlight those um, and sort of delete the rest of the text. So I've used a red biro to outline my my words that I chose and blue, um, I think it was a sharpie, but a blue pen to sort of obliterate um, the rest of the text. Now this blue is quite see-through so you can still see the text but often um, I will do it with um, sort of this sort of black pen to completely obliterate the words, just depends what sort of effect you want really. So and then I drew a heart and then later on I decided I'd colour that in a bit and then I found two more words so my actual sentence from the whole page is beautiful heart replacing nothing. Um, doesn't mean anything it's just fun to do. So I hope you'll have a go at some more to text it's just fun. Some, sometimes, and I think you probably saw in the human, you can uh, sort of draw lines between each of your words or do it in a more sort of uh, bubbly sort of way rather than squares. It really is. Uh, the, the world's your oyster. You can do whatever you fancy. So that's auto text very, very briefly. Again, I've picked a really big topic this week. So let's move on because I want to get through some other stuff as well. So prompts. So sometimes you think, oh, I don't know what to do in my journal. What shall I do? What shall I do? And if you've got um, some prompts that you can go to, um, that will help sort of get you kickstart your creativity and you can start working in that way. So I'm going to show you some different sorts now. Uh, this is uh, this was a collaborative project that I took part in a few years ago. Um, it, it originated as a pack of cards, which you can see some of here, um, and I wanted to turn them into a set of art journaling prompts. And there's all sorts in here. There's sort of colour. That's just colour, no words on it. They're all double-sided as well. Um, uh, this one is an image and the words, the empty chair. Some of them are techniques, so we've got scribble on this one, uh, other techniques, so make lists, talk about that in a minute. You know, some of them are images with one word, like this one says energy, uh, when, what, where was I when, you know, finish the sentence sort of prompt, uh, numbers, so you get the gist, there's all sorts of things, faces here, that one is. So they're just images or words or anything that prompts you to um, get going in your journals. And uh, now I'm going to include in the PDF a uh, prompt, a journal prompt sheet for you to um, print out and chop up. Um, and you can, if you have a box or a jar or somewhere to keep these things, if you're feeling a bit, oh, I don't know what to do, you can, uh, you know, have a rootle in your jar, pick one out, see what you get, and then work on that in your journal. Uh, and you can make your own prompts up as well, of course. Um, the prompt sheet in the PDF will uh, get you going, hopefully, and then you can add stuff to your jar as you go along, which is great. So let's show you some other prompt things. Um, a lot of prompts are questions um, or, you know, finish the sentence type things. Uh, this is an example I haven't worked in, um, but to show you, it's just a nice big swirly squiggle done with um, pencils, I think that is. And the words, I am thankful for so obviously the intention is that you think about what you're grateful for in life you know small blessings however you interpret the whatever the sentence is and then fill your page so you could fill it with images you could have I don't know family photos fun holidays good times you know or it could just be writing so it's you know a prompt to get you going is a doesn't have to be executed in one particular way it's how you you know how you look at it how how what it means to you and how you would um, sort of depict that in your journal. Another good prompt, I do this a lot with kids, this is another one from my uh, big old journal that I worked with children with last year, I am. Kids love this. Um, so yeah I've done this in a bubble with triangles of random paper and words written on them. You could also do it, I think in the first week's uh, PDF there was a picture, an example of a hand shape uh, where I'd drawn around my hand, um, collaged the background and filled the hand with words that represent me. So that sort of prompt works really well and I'll put some extra ones into the um, 
PDF as well. But and there's also prompts like um, ways of doing things differently. You know, to think about. So, for example, you might want to draw boxes on a page. This this is a, um, an oldology journal of mine. And I've drawn boxes all over the page and then filled them. So boxes or leaf shapes or bubbles. You know, you could draw them on your page and use them as a prompt to fill them. This is another holiday journal where I've used the prompt of the day of the week. So um, I've used the letter. Each letter is, is each um, paragraph or sentence. Whatever you. So for instance, this is Wednesday, as you can see. We drove to Galloway Forest Park via the back roads. Lots of lovely twiddly country roads. So it's ju yeah, it's just sort of um, led by the days of the week. So all sorts of things like that are prompts. Um, other things I just want to show you really are lists. Lists are great in journals. So this one with the boxes, this was a holiday journal and I've done lists of 10. So all of these boxes are 10 different things. So I've got 10 good sweets, uh, 10 comedians, 10 things to try, pet hates, all that sort of stuff. So lists are great. Um, and I do do lists, lists in journals quite a lot. This is a list using uh, just chopped up bits of text, text from a book, which is quite funny. Let me hold that up a bit so you can see it. So, and I've, this is a one to ten from I've cut from a magazine or something. So we've got stupid stuff like a continual feast, a few rickety chairs, a lap full of corn, museum drawers, elbow grease. So you know, just silly, silly stuff. I love being silly and quirky and funny in my journals. And then there's this one, five golden rules. Uh, so again, just text cut from magazines. This one's less silly. So, um, you know, yeah, they can be silly, they can be serious, they can be whatever you want them to be, obviously. Another good prompt is 101 things. Um, people go, ah, oh, no, but I quite like doing this. It's a really good um, way of getting your brain going. So this one in this journal is 101 alternatives to an external studio. I had an external studio once and uh, when I had to leave it, I was very eaten up about not being able to have my studio anymore. So I did 101 ideas to of things that I could, um, places and ideas that I could use instead of having an external studio. But it works for all things I've done. 101 uses for a baked bean tin, 101 things you can do with grass, you know, it can be really silly stuff. But at some point in the process you get to a point where the ideas although the ideas themselves seem really ridiculous and stupid there'll be a grain of something in there that will inspire you or motivate you or you know prompt you to do something further um, another thing i like to do in journals um, revolves around poetry or song lyrics or just bits of text or quotes that i've heard and i love to illustrate them or just include them um, this one is, uh, it, I suppose it's a poem, yes, that I've sort of chosen to illustrate quite sparely, really, because the words were more important to me than the images. Um, but I do love to include poetry and poems and quotes and stuff. There's another one in here. I, do, I will scribble them down on bits of random paper, so I'll end up with stuff like this that goes into journals. So a couple of quotes that I've popped in here. So this one's about the sun and sort of um, when the day starts. So I've, you know, annotated it. This is just a post-it I had knocking about that I've obviously splashed coffee on and just stuck in my journal. So, you know, don't overlook these scribbled bits of paper. If you scribble a quote down off, if you're listening to the radio or something, yeah, include it in your journal. Uh, so we've done that, we've done that. Oh, I think there's a bit more altered text in this one to show you. So this one is, I'd cut something out of here. And as ever, <laughs> you'll be getting the hang of this now. Don't throw anything away. So I used the page, despite having cut that out, to do some more altered text. Made a little poem up. So uh, everything is fair game. I say that all the time at my workshops. Um, the subject of poetry and quotes and stuff. Uh, this is a little haiku journal that I made several years ago. Um, haiku is a type of poetry, uh, if you don't know what that is. Uh, and this is the haiku journal I started. This was also collaborative, so it's been to various other people. It's good to have a nice, you know, themed journals are good as well to use. And the last thing I want to show you is this silly little book that makes me laugh every time I look at it. And that's the point of art, one of the many points of art. I had this beaten up old copy of a dictionary of proverbs and decided that um, I was going to use it to fill this little sturdy book um, made with the gluing method that I showed you last week. 
or was it the week before? Week before. Um, so all of the little pages that I've done in here with cut text are all from this book. Um, some of which are just just make me laugh out loud. But just as an example of you know just using text really, because I haven't done anything to the pages other than fold them in and glue them down. So the images behind the text are not mine. It really is just the placement of the text in here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to read one out to you. This one's a bit silly. Nine days is one coat, a little bird, dry bread, a loophole, an empty sack and dirty puddings makes plenty. <laughs> so they're just really silly things. Um, I hope that you've got lots of inspiration from uh, this week's video all about words and text and writing and stuff. Um, massive topic. There'll be more in the PDF. Um, but yeah, go away and think about words and text and chop things up and have a wonderful arty, texty time in your journals. And I will see you all next week. <laughs>